Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today. Uh, today we're going to talk about uh, working with uh, third-party REST APIs. Uh, specifically, we're going to talk about QuickBooks API. QuickBooks is a very popular accountant software, and maybe you or your accountant are already using it. And uh, But the idea is not just to show how to work with QuickBooks REST API. Uh, the idea is to show you how to work with any new REST API service, how to read the documentation, what steps to take, how to understand what works and what doesn't, how to troubleshoot. Just like we're going to uh, start it from scratch and we'll take you to a working application even a simple one. It's probably going to be a second part of this tutorial as well, because that's a pretty big topic. We're going to cover uh, most of the basics uh, in uh, this webinar with my uh, QuickBooks API project. Uh, as usually, this project will be available in the uh, members area for you to download. First of all, you need to sign up for an account. So QuickBooks, uh, it was a separate company, but it was acquired by Intuit. And you need to start by uh, creating an Intuit account. I assume you have done that already. Uh, once you've done that, you need to proceed to user profile and populate all the fields there. Uh, you need to specify your country, address, state, uh, your company name. If you don't do this, uh, you would not be able to create an application and you need to create an application in the developer's console. So that's something just that you need to do. So you create a next step. Next step, you create a sandbox. Sandbox is uh, something that is basically like a test company, test data of sorts. Uh, you can create a new one. I already created one for myself. And once you create it, uh, it will uh, populate it with uh, some sample data, some customers, some invoices, uh, account information, payment information, etc. So it's uh, basically it's created a database for you with some sample data. You can go here and you can explore your data and uh, this is uh, not related to API. This is just something that you can see uh, as a regular QuickBooks user, but you need that sandbox. Well, once you do that, uh, you also need to create a next step. Next step is to create an application. That's, you go to your developer's dashboard and you create your application. I called mine uh, REST API app. You can create, I believe, as many applications as you want, or maybe it's limited, I don't know. In other case, you create an application, and what is important here, it's uh, that you create keys, or it will create some keys for you automatically. And the keys and credentials, you will have uh, your client ID and your client secret. So this is something that you need to connect to the API. Uh, what else we need to do here? Besides, we will need to copy client ID and client secret. And besides that, you need to specify redirect URIs, URLs. Uh, I don't think I need this one because it's a sample one. I can delete it. So for local testing, you need to specify HTTP localhost port 8086. That's a default port that PHP Runner uses. And all oh, callback that PHP. I did the same for diff uh, several few different ports as well, because sometimes when you run PHP Runner for a long time or multiple copies of PHP Runner, it will use a different port. So I specified for a few different ports here. And if you use sprunner.net, the URL will be without that, that PHP, like this. When you switch to test it on your 
real web server, obviously, you have to specify the URL of uh, of callback.php on your real website. But we're doing local testing for now. So we will be fine with this. Uh, the idea of this URL is where uh, after login, uh, where you will be redirected. You need to be redirected back to PHP Runner app. And this is uh, the URL you need to specify. It's also in the documentation. Every time you use uh, OAuth authentication, you need to specify uh, this kind of URL. OK, next step. Let's uh, go to PHP Runner now. And let's see how our uh, connection is configured. So I created a new REST API connection called uh, QuickBooks REST API. If I double click on it, uh, name it can be any name. This URL I copied from uh, uh, documentation. And uh, obviously, since we're working with sandbox and not with production, it contains uh, sandbox in it. And uh, on the next step, we are selecting, I will show you how I found it out. Uh, we're selecting of 2.0 user. User means it will be an interactive kind of login that you will have to enter username and password in your web browser. And uh, this is client ID. This is client secret. Don't worry, they're not really secret. Uh, this is like a test, some test data. So scope, that's also comes from documentation. What kind of scope you need to specify? We just need for now, uh, com that into it that quickbooks that account and there are other scopes but we don't need it for uh, this example like you can request access to payments and everything but uh, for now we just need accounting so what about authorization uri and access token uri no, first of all they will be the same for all applications so you can just copy them from here and using your application i just want to explain where did i find it and uh, so there is a documentation about how to perform authentication in QuickBooks. That's a lot of documentation here, guys. It just, uh, yeah, you need to take it step by step. So it's, so there is a document here that explains uh, how to work with uh, OAuth 2.0 in your application that connects to the REST API. And it basically it explains steps that you need to take. Create your app and developer portal. That's what we did, right? Uh, you can practice authorization in OAuth Playground, also useful. I, I will show you later what is this and how to use it. And then it explains uh, some basics of uh, how of 2.0 works in general, <clears throat> how the <clears throat> data is being sent back and forth. It's most of it is already up, uh, implemented uh, in PHP Runner itself. Basically, what you need to do, you need to uh, configure these things in uh, PHP Runner. Client ID, client secret, and authorization URI, access token URI, which will be exactly the same for all applications that work with uh, the API. How did I find it? Uh, there was a, in that article, there was a link that pointed to, let me see, pointed to this URL and authorization endpoint that was the first URL and token endpoint that was the second URL. So I just copied both of these and pasted it to PHP Runner. So yeah, it took a little bit of time to figure out how it works. But this, uh, if you're like not familiar, like uh, if you're working with some new REST API and you don't know where to get all of those, uh, you can check their forums, you can contact their support, they should be able to point you to um, to the document that explains where to get all of this. But all five fields on this screen are required. Uh, I don't think it's going to work if you don't specify all five of them. Okay, that's uh, authorization. 
And you may have noticed that, in fact, I use uh, custom. So I uh, it didn't work out of the box because the implementation of OAUF is not standard, I would say, and it did not work out of the box. So let me show you how the application looks. Now that I switch back to uh, using the uh, just a built-in option, no code. Uh, uh, let me show you. If I open a new incognito window and try to access the same URL, it most likely will not work. It requires me to log in. I have my username and password saved in the browser. Yep, here it is. That's the error that we get in. That's, uh, this is exactly what I wanted to show you, uh, just uh, as a step of troubleshooting. So you implemented some new REST API. You tried to uh, log on and it didn't work. And the error says invalid client. It doesn't explain much. Probably we can Google it and uh, try to figure out like what uh, invalid client error means in case of their specific REST API. Uh, our experts here uh, were able to figure this out real quick without actually uh, googling everything. So the standard implementation on OAuth uh, assumes that we need to pass client ID. Uh, let me show you where and how we need uh, to make that change so it works. I double click on a REST API connection setup again. Uh, I click next. I go to custom, click edit custom code. And here, uh, the default code looks like this. So, uh, what, uh, since uh, the error message said is something about uh, client ID, we commented it out. build the project, and if you do it again, uh, it should work. Uh, let me test it in the same incognito window, so we know for sure that we're doing the right thing. And it works now. So the problem is with passing that client ID, the implementation of uh, all protocol uh, for some reason do not accept client ID.